Builders in the Void A story by user DrunkRobot97 Nishal His name is Nishal, and he terrifies me. He's the latest addition to the crew of Outpost number 17839, a tiny, rusting recon station on the Galactic Council border. Behind us, civilized space. In front of us, criminals, pirates, and slavers who would see said civilized space burn. It's our job to yell as loud as we can if any scum tries to get in, hoping that the peacekeeping fleet comes quickly enough to deal with the problem before we all die. Did I mention we're in space? Most planets are bad, but space is on another level. Space gives a living organism absolute zilch to survive. No air, no food, no protection from the sun. Space wants you suffocated, microwaved, and freeze-dried inside a minute. This does not bother Nishal. Generally, humans aren't trusted much among council races. I guess part of it is the suits. Our pathogens are hyper-evolved by their standards, so a human outside an enviro suit is a rare sight. Their visors are opaque, so you can't see their expressions. Ergo, they are not trusted. Much of it, though, is their behavior. For such a young species, they claim to accomplish much. Take any human news data burst, and you'll find a story of a human ship breaking some record, or a human colony lasting on some death world. It's all bravado, I believed. They're just not used to thinking on our scale. I thought they were arrogant, a child picking a fight with those twice their size. Of course, at the time, I'd never met a human before. Tours of duty here on recon posts get very long, about 20 Earth years, and I'm on my 14th year. Of course, when it finishes, I'll never have to work again in my life, being one of the few stupid enough to spend so long in space. And the galaxy tends to pass us by during these tours. When I started, humans were still firmly a client race, and where I lived was too far from their border for any immigrants to reach. Now, though, humanity is on the council, and so have to support the recon network, including sending staff where needed. Nishal was my own first contact. Nishal's job title is Outer Hull Specialist. Of all the 128 positions on this station, OHS is in the top five best paying, and has the shortest tour of six Earth months. It has to be, for anyone to be willing to take the job. It involves putting on a spacesuit, walking out of the airlock, and spending six straight hours floating around the hull, making repairs where needed. Souls. The number of people I've seen lose their nerve, get killed, or the former shortly followed by the latter was far too high. Somebody on the station suggested, why not get a human? Most laughed, of course. The human's claims on technical expertise must be exaggerated. But some listened. After all, they seemed insane enough to keep calm during EVA. I didn't really think much of him when he first came aboard. Average height, not too puny, not too muscular. He wasn't at all hostile to any of the crew, even friendly. Humans had a reputation for being xenophiles in every sense of the word. Just another whelp who's yet to see the danger of his position, I thought. He'll wisen up when he makes his first shift. Normally, when an OHS goes into the airlock for the first time, they start hyperventilating. It usually takes 30 minutes for them to calm down enough to go through. Nashal, he walks in. His heart rate doesn't even twitch. He's cracking jokes with his handler, methodically checking his equipment. He's going to get his soul-damned ass killed. He makes his shift, and nothing goes wrong. Never panicking, never raising his voice. He goes around, performs necessary repairs, doing them faster and with the highest standard I've ever seen from an OHS, and comes back inside. He takes a shower, in his own clean room, obviously, eats some nutrient paste, then goes to bed. Most recruits would be sleeping on anesthetics in the med bay, their nerves completely shot. Over the next few weeks, I got talking to him. I was wondering if he had some sort of brain deficiency that cost him his self-preservation instincts. He told me he had EVA experience, even though he was only 21 Earth years old. Very young by human standards. Apparently, he was born on a space station, and being able to handle yourself in EVA was required learning. He then started talking about his home, his friends back there, going out fishing with his father. I swear, how the hell do you fit a lake on a space station? What struck me 
was the lack of focus on how his home was in space, as if it was normal. And that's why everyone likes and is terrified of Nishal and what he represents. He became a valuable part of the team. The station has never been in such good condition. But every time he starts a shift, he dances with death itself, and he takes it in his stride, and jokes at our nervousness, as if we're the crazy ones. Imagine a galaxy with 40 billion nishals, and you'll understand. All right, guys, that is going to do it for this one today. Thank you guys so much for uh, watching slash listening. I really appreciate you being here. Um, I haven't done a Builders in the Void in a while. been really, really caught up with Chrysalis. Um, we might be having a really cool collab coming up here, by the way, guys. Um, I'm going to be collaborating with a channel. Um, I've already done that part. I've sent off the, uh, the uh, audio to her, and she's putting that all in order and getting her video ready. Vid video ready? Yeah, that word. Um, and then um, I think she and I might be doing a uh, collab series over on my channel where she will be voicing um, someone kind of special there, guys. Someone who's very important to a certain story that I also haven't done in a while. Perhaps something called The Last Angel? Hmm? Yes, perhaps. I don't know why suddenly I started talking like Cher or Mitch McConnell. It's one of the two. But uh, thank you guys again so much for being here. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if you feel like it, go to that Patreon link that's uh, popped up now. Um, and tell me, how many of you have a favorite D whatever? You know what I mean? Like, what's your favorite dice? Like, I, I haven't played D&D &D or Call of Cthulhu was my original game for role playing um, in a long time. But I do have a favorite, like, dice. Uh, my favorite is the D10. <laughs> I think it's a cool dice. It looks neat. It's got five sides on two like like two planes intersecting each other that's a cool fucking shape i don't remember what it's called is it a one two three four five five and it's got like what is this called uh i can't remember what d10s are actually called like geometrically but if you guys have a favorite uh dice let me know what it is and if you have a like favorite dice set if you can put pictures up i would love to see those guys like imager links or reddit links or what the fuck ever to like image hosting sites i would love to see your favorite sets of dice because that would be so fucking cool anyway guys i will talk to you later thank you so much for being here i love you bye y'all the emancipation proclamation miro air purifier is all about performance extremely powerful and very easy to maintain it's the best air purifier of the year no more dusty rooms only clean air. It's not high maintenance like some other brands. It's simple to maintain and easy to clean. The power of pure air. Miro.